this will show the post-processing of M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, that I took with the Vespera telescope back in November of 2022. I was at the south rim of the Grand Canyon at what my astronomy apps say is about a Bortle 1.5. This was collected with 3.5 hours of in total integration time using the mosaic mode of the telescope. As you can see, the tip image shows up unstretched. So the first step is to do a stretch. One option is to get into levels and then play with the gamma and the black level. Although here I'm going to do a shortcut of just clicking on this tone mapping persona up in the top menu and let it do an initial auto adjustment. As you will see in a minute, it leaves it way overexposed. So we will make adjustments for that shortly. Once it comes up. Okay, a couple more moments here. Okay, here it is. Uh, so the only thing I'm going to do here is to decrease this tone compression enough, and I'm going to concentrate on the stars. So initially, I just care about the stars. I'm going to crank up this local contrast a little bit just to give me a head start on that. But my main goal at this step is in looking at the stars to make sure they don't get bloated. So I'm going to call that good enough for this first step and click apply. And this will make those persona adjustments to my main image and then return back to the main. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to go into my image, my layer name, and rename it original. And then I'm going to make a copy of this layer. Hit Control C and then control V to make a copy. And in the copy, I'm going to rename this no stars for my subsequent step. Then with this no stars layer selected, I'm going into one of my filters I purchased, filters, plugins, RC Astro Star Exterminator. And this will um make a new it would change this layer and extract the stars now this takes a few minutes so to spare you that wait i will pause the video and then restart it once this step is done okay we're back the star extraction is done now you can see the layer with the stars removed although i do want a layer with only the stars. And the way you do that in Affinity Photo is you from your, you form a difference between the original and the no stars layer. So with the original selected and both layers shown, I go into this tab here and I switch from normal down to difference. And that will make a difference between those two layers. Now, this is just a virtual difference, a presentation only, not a true layer. So to make this a true layer, I'm going into Documents, Flatten. And that will flatten these two layers together. And so now we have a true layer of, of only the stars. So I'm going to name this only stars. And I'm going to copy this layer, Control-C. Then from the history at the bottom, I'm going to go back to just before I flattened it and showed what I had before. And I'm going to click on the No Stars layer and do a Control V to paste in the Only Stars layer. So now I have the Only Stars and the No Stars layer in the document. And so I can see one or the other, depending on which which checkbox I have selected. 
although I would like to see them both at the same time. So I'm going to click on the only stars layer. And in this option here where it says normal, I'm going to change that to screen. So this will allow me to see both of the layers at the same time where I have the freedom to turn either one on or off. So here's the only stars and here is the, um, I mean, here's the uh, only stars. The other one was the, the stars only. The, um, now for the subsequent processing, it's very important to know which layer you have selected. So now I have the no stars layer selected. I'm going to turn off the other one just so I know for sure what I'm editing. So with no stars and I only have this one, the checkbox shown. And so what I see is what I'm actually editing. So the first thing I'm going to do is as a shortcut is just go back into this tone mapping and let it and let it run through one more time. And then I will uh, do any subsequent editing from that. So again, this is way overexposed. So I'm going to lower this down and play around with this local contrast. And I can also play with the exposure a little bit as well. I think I will leave this the same and just do my adjustments here. So here I've really brought out the um, the extended part of the galaxy. And by playing around with this tone compression, I can make sure that I'm not um, overexposed. And so once I get this kind of where I want it to be, I can hit apply. And I can go back to my layers and turn back on the stars to see what I have. So we could call this good enough right here, although it is possible to make the background a little bit darker. So I could go into curves and do stuff, but then that will make me lose some of this faint parts here of the extended galaxy. So what I'm going to do instead is do another filter, the special astro cryptography remove background filter. And as I choose other places in the document, I can click on this sample it position, and then this will sample these different places and remove the background around that. So by clicking around the galaxy, I can make sure that the, the background has been removed in places around so you can kind of by being careful how you do this, you can get the background dark, but not sacrifice any of this nebulous, any of this uh, extended galaxy part. If you go too far, you kind of have to back up and um, start over. So I'm going to call that good enough and hit apply. And back in the layers, I can turn on the stars. So that's looking pretty good to me. Now I could come in here and run another um, purchase filter. We'll see what it looks like, whether we want to keep it. So I'm going to go into filters, plugins, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise AI, and we will use our judgment whether we want to use this or just um, stick with what we had before. 
So this does a split screen where on the left is the before and on the right is the after. And you can see if you look in the detail, there is a lot of graininess on the left that is removed on the right. And there's several different models here. We could experiment with each one and look at the defaults and see which if any of these look better to us or if we always like the one on the left, the unadjusted one better. So I'm going to run through all these different models with the defaults and, and see if I make a decision. Depends on if you want it to be all kind of smooth without this graininess or if you like the graininess. And there's also these sliders you can play around with to uh, remove noise or not. So just looking real quick, and this is basically just, um, there's no true right answer. Some people have different preferences. Some people may like the original better and not do any of this at all. I don't see a big difference between most of these. The clear is kind of a compromise between some of the others. So I think I might choose clear and hit apply. But the original actually looked pretty good in my case to start with. So once this applies, I can um, look at look at the stars. Now I can also choose the only stars layer and do the same thing. I could run this through a filter to tighten these up a little bit more. So we'll do the same thing with this and decide if we like the original stars better or the filtered stars. So on the left is the original, and on the right is after I um, ran it through this topaz, anti-noise. Yeah, this I don't like. That makes the stars look kind of funny. Let's see what the severe noise option looks like with, with the defaults and the clear. I think I like the clear. Let me look at the standard. And compare that with the clear. I think I like the clear better. So the stars are tighter here than the original, but um, they don't have some kind of abnormal looks. So I'm going to click on apply. So now the stars will be a little tighter in the image. Once it comes up, coming soon. OK, I'll turn back on the no stars. So here is the Andromeda Galaxy with this. There are some other color enhancements, saturations I could do. So let's go to the no stars layer back into adjustments and I could go into something like vibrance and play around with the vibrance and the saturation to just kind of bring out some colors a little bit We'll just do that a little bit. OK, I'm going to call that done. Since this is just a quick and dirty post processing. Now I want to go into File, Save As. I've been played around with a few versions of this. So I'm going to call this uh, version E. 
in a course for sharing. Of course, when I save it, it saves it as the Affinity Photo proprietary format, where if you want to go back and continue editing, you open that up. If you just want to share this with people, I'm going to click on Export to give a uh, JPEG. I'm going to save this high quality. And also save that. And if I want to actually look at that JPEG, I'm going to open that up. So this is the JPEG um, that we just saved. And so this is a fairly decent Andromeda galaxy with the Vespera telescope from a dark site. Now this could be better with um, a little more skilled post-processing. It could have been better if I went longer than 3.5 hours. And so this isn't the full potential of what the Vespera is capable of, but it gives you an idea of, of what you can do with even just a 50 millimeter aperture Vespera.